Hello, hello, dear viewers. A very warm welcome to our channel. In today's video, we are going to have a look at the radiator cap. We'll be looking at the principle of operation of a radiator cap, the benefits it has, and some of the symptoms of a radiator cap that is going bad. A radiator cap is a small but very important component of a vehicle cooling system. It is located on the top of the radiator. For example, on this particular case, it is located on top of the radiator. And on some cases, it is located on top of the expansion tank. The main function of the radiator cap is to maintain the correct pressure inside the cooling system. If you look at the radiator cap, there is a designated value of the pressure on the radiator cap. This one is a little rusty and old, but you can see there is a 0 0.9 mark that is written on the radiator cap. So this is the pressure at which the cooling system pressure will be maintained. So the radiator, the radiator cap will maintain a constant pressure, a correct pressure in the cooling system. This prevents coolant from boiling over and keeps the cooling system free from debris and contaminants. So the main purpose is to pressurize the cooling system. It will pressurize the cooling system and it will only allow coolant to skip through this pipe only when the pressure exceeds this value. So by maintaining that pressure, the boiling point of the coolant will be kept high and so that the coolant will remain liquid inside. Now, in order to accomplish this task, the radiator cap has two valves. There is a pressure valve and there is a vacuum valve. Look, for example, this is a pressure valve. Right here we have a spring. It is a spring-loaded valve. Here we have a seal. This seal will seal an oil, a liquid passage from the radiator neck. It will seal it shut. Only when the pressure exceeds the designated value, which is 0 0.9 bar for this particular cap, there are caps with a one bar indicated on the radiator cap. For this particular one, if it exceeds 0 0.9 bar, it will start forcing this open, and then when it is opening, the coolant will have now the tendency of skipping out. It will be skipping vented out to the expansion tank, or if it is kept open, it would be vented to the atmosphere. So, right here we have a pressure valve. The pressure valve is spring-loaded. In between, on the back side, there is a spring. So, only when the coolant pressure is sufficient enough to overcome that spring, it will open and exit. So, by doing so, it will maintain the maximum coolant pressure. And the other thing is, when the engine starts to cool down, vacuum will be created because the already expanded liquid now starts to come together it starts to contract and that will create low pressure area inside the cooling system in order to prevent the radiator and other cooling system from shrinking due to that vacuum there is a vacuum valve that will allow either coolant to return or air to be admitted back into the cooling system so on top of here you see there is a valve a tiny valve it's a, called a vacuum valve look it opens when there is suction see when there is suction it opens look see that that opening that is a vacuum valve so when it is time for the cooling system to shrink it will allow air to be admitted back if this is vented to the atmosphere, it will allow air to be admitted back and prevent cooling system collapse due to increased vacuum. If this is connected to expansion tank, it will suck back liquid coolant and then that will be allowed and accepted in by this vacuum valve. So when there is vacuum inside the cooling system, that vacuum will open this vacuum valve and air or coolant will be allowed to enter back to the cooling system. So by doing so, the radiator vacuum valve prevent shrinkage or collapsing of the cooling system due to excessive vacuum. So this is how the cooling system radiator cap operates. There is one seal that lies on top of here. There is another big seal. You see, there is a big seal that will prevent coolant from escaping to the atmosphere. And when it is closed, you have to lock these knobs. These knobs, it has to be locked always make sure that it is locked tight. When it is locked tight, it will usually align with the radiator. So every time you check coolant, make sure that you close it 
like so and start pulling it up and check it is firmly closed otherwise if it is not properly closed due to vibration when vehicle is being driven it might fall off and it might lead to engine failure in engine overheating and then an imminent engine failure now there are several symptoms that can indicate bad or failing radiator cap let's have a look at some of the major ones one of the main Indication of a bad radiator cap is coolant leakage. If you happen to notice excessive coolant leakage from the radiator neck, from the radiator cap, that could be an indication of a failing radiator cap. So if you notice coolant leaking from the radiator cap or around the cap area, it may be a sign that the cap is not sealing properly. If there is a problem with the seals, if there is a problem with this sealing gasket, if there is a problem with this sealing gasket, and if the spring tension is also at fault, that can cause excessive coolant leakage from the cooling system. The other indication is engine overheating. As we have mentioned previously, the engine cooling system pressure has to be maintained by the radiator cap. If the radiator cap is not doing that properly, that can lead to boiling of the cooling system. If the cooling coolant boils, it will, it will not be efficient enough in convecting heat from the engine and that will lead to engine overheating. So a faulty radiator cap can lead to loss of pressure inside the cooling system, and that can lead to engine overheating. The other indication of a bad radiator cap is if you check your coolant system every time, for example, every morning, if you have a habit of checking coolant, and if there is a frequent low coolant level, that could be an indication of bad radiator cap. So if you frequently find yourself needing to top up the coolant in your vehicle, it could be due to a faulty radiator cap that is allowing coolant to escape. As we have mentioned previously, the coolant has to be let out only when the pre-designed pressure is met. But if there is a problem with the pressure valve of the cooling system or if there is a problem with the spring tension, excessive coolant leak will be there and leading to frequent low coolant level. And the other thing that can be an indication is if there is a visible physical damage to the radiator cap. For example, when you close it, if it is not shutting properly, if it is not sealing tight, if there is physical damage, that can be an indication of a bad radiator cap. If there are cracks or if there is corrosion or if there are worn or broken seals, physically damaged seals, if there is very dry and corroded seal, if there is very dirty and somehow cracked seals that could be an indication of a bad radiator cap and uh, it could be time for you to replace the radiator cap coolant discoloration can also be an indication of a bad radiator cap if you notice that the coolant in your vehicle is discolored or contaminated it could be a result of failing radiator cap allowing debris to enter the cooling system so the cooling system has to be sealed contaminants has to be kept out by the radiator cap if you somehow discover that the coolant is discolored or if it is contaminated, it could be an indication of a, a bad radiator cap. And the other thing that can indicate bad radiator cap is uh, if there is a loss of pressure. If there is loss of pressure inside the cooling system, failing radiator cap may not be able to maintain the proper pressure in the cooling system, leading to a decrease in overall system efficiency. Now there are testers that will allow the pressure test of the radiator cap itself. That testing device will tell you at what pressure the radiator cap will start opening. So if you happen to re register lower values than indicated on the radiator cap, it means that it is time for the radiator cap to be replaced. If you happen to hear a steam or hissing noise from the radiator area, from the radiator cap, if you hear a steam scaping or hissing, in the radiator cap area, it could be an indication that the cap is not sealing properly, and it also indicates that the radiator cap is allowing pressure to escape to the atmosphere. So these are some of the main symptoms of a bad radiator cap. If you happen to smell coolant, if there is frequent coolant smell coming from the engine bay, sweet smell or coolant inside the engine, that could be an indication of a bad radiator cap. So if you notice any of these symptoms, it is important to address them promptly and prevent potential damage. Always remember that this is a very crucial component 
Failure to take care of the radiator cap will lead to engine overheating, engine seizure, and lots of other associated problems which can lead to costly repair on the engine and the cooling system itself. So if you notice any of the mentioned symptoms, please have them taken care of immediately. That will help you prevent costly repair. So that is how you can tell if there is a problem with the radiator cap. Well, dear viewers, that is all we have for you regarding the operation principle and construction of a radiator cap and some of the signs of a bad radiator cap. If you like this video, please smash the like button. If you are new here, do consider subscribing and turn on notification so that you will be notified whenever we come up with another video. Until then, stay safe.